Something's just got to be done about her. Her the mother of young children. But she's nothing but trouble where the young men of this town are concerned. She's not fit to be a mother. Good afternoon, ladies. I, I couldn't help but overhear your remarks about Mrs. McElroy. And since her children are my concern, too, and are clean, well-kept, and among the politest children I have in my classes, obviously, she is a very good mother. How'd it go? Worse than I thought. The town council's indicting her. That's ridiculous. Indicting her for what? I'll get the best lawyer in the whole country by gunnies. When's the trial set? This afternoon. What are you talking about? You can't get a lawyer by this afternoon. Where is the nearest one? Abilene, over a hundred miles. The only lawyer in this town is Mayor Pritchard, and he's doing the prosecuting. There's only one thing to do. That's ask for a postponement. How do you do that? Well, you step up to the judge and you say, Your Honor, the defendant would like to request a postponement so she can have time to get herself a lawyer. That's her constitutional right. Well, you talk as good as any lawyer I ever heard. Why don't you be her lawyer? Because I'm not a lawyer, that's why. Well, how come you know so much about law if you ain't a lawyer? I worked for the U.S. Marshal a couple of times, and I've been in court a couple of times, but it doesn't make me a lawyer or anything near one. Okay, okay, don't get mad. But you'll have to be the one that asked the judge for that, uh, whatever you call it. I'd never remember to say your honor and all that. I'd probably get mad and bust him in the nose. You can't bust the judge in the nose. Who can't? Look, when he's up on that bench, he's got the whole United States government backing him up. Seems a little one-sided to me. Well, it can be sometimes, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Something's happened, Mr. Bonsell, and, well, I don't know to whom to turn except you. They will claim that she is an unfit mother and will try to make her children wards of the community. I certainly hope something can be done, regardless of me. It would be a terrible miscarriage of justice if Mrs. McElroy's children were deprived of their mother. And the other way around, too. This court is now in session. Jenny Mae McElroy, will you stand before the court? How do you plead? Not guilty. Are you represented by an attorney? I am not. May it please the court. Yes, who are you? My name is Vimp Bonner, sir. The defendant would like to get a postponement so that she can have time to get a lawyer. I object, Your Honor. On what grounds? On the grounds that the evidence against this woman is complete and incontrovertible. You're out of order at this time. Your grounds are inadequate, Mr. Pritchard. How much time does the defendant require? Well, I guess 
Two weeks, sir? I think that's reasonable. Your Honor, if she does not wish a postponement, I will speak in her defense. She has done nothing wrong. She has nothing to fear. What is your interest in this case? I wish to defend this young woman if she will permit it. You have a license to practice in this state? No, Your Honor. I took my master's degree in law in Connecticut. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Miss Purcell? This is serious. You know that. She is entitled to have someone speak for her now. And if she will let me, I am going to do it. Your Honor, even though I am not licensed in this state, perhaps I can act as amicus curiae. As friend of the court. I think that's possible. Mrs. McElroy, will you allow Miss Purcell to act in your behalf? You know, you can't afford to make a mistake. Mrs. McElroy, please let me try. I know your children, and I know you, and I honestly feel I can defend you as well as anyone. You go ahead, Miss Purcell. I believe you. The defendant will permit me to act in her behalf as friend of the court. Is this your wish, Mrs. McElroy? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Pritchard. What evidence do you have in substantiation of the charges against the defendant? Plenty, Your Honor. Plenty. We shall prove conclusively that this woman is unfit to live in a law-abiding, God-fearing community, and that she is unfit as a mother to care properly for her children. And we petition this court to place those three fatherless children in an institution where they can properly... I object. On what grounds? I object to counsel stating that Mrs. McElroy is unfit this and unfit that to generalization without proof. I'm in the process of proving my contention, if it pleases the court. Sit down, Miss Purcell. I call Mrs. Amy Goodhue to the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the true self you got. I do. Including breakfasts. You old dried up bed flat. It was about 8.30 last night. And, um... What did you find on the Mrs. McElroy? Both of them seriously. You asked Mrs. McElroy to explain their presence there? Yes, sir, I did. She claimed something. I object, Your Honor. How does he know what they were there for? Sustained. Counsel, please confine his questioning to the case at hand. I apologize, Your Honor. That's all, Your Honor. You may step down. Your Honor. I would like to proceed now with my defense. There's not a grain of truth in anything these people claim. From where I sit, Mrs. McElroy is a fine young woman, and she has three fine young children. Gentlemen of the jury, I shall not waste any more of your valuable time. You've heard all the evidence. You can form your own opinion as to the character of the accused. As Mr. Bonner said, none of the slander against Mrs. McElroy has been proved. Oh, but something else has. The institution of motherhood has been held up to contumely and scorn. Is this a crime that places a woman beyond the pale of Christian charity? What is she guilty of? Bringing three fine children into the world? Maintaining them by her own industry, with no expense to the community. How could it be believed that heaven would be angry at her, when to the little done by her toward it, God has been pleased to add his divine skill and admirable workmanship in the intricate formation of their bodies? and crowned it all by furnishing them with rational minds and immortal souls.
Such laws as you invoke against her are cruel laws. They're unjust and unfair to nature and to every woman everywhere. These laws were made for the protection of women and children. Does this protection cease? Women bring life into the world. That is our destiny, the creation of life. The jury will please retire and consider a verdict. Gentlemen, have you reached an agreement? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant not guilty. Yeah.